Welcome to the digital production with today's dental resins and 3D printers webinar. I'm your host, Scott Corman, dental division manager at Proto 3000. I'm here with CAD CAM specialist, Mike Wang, who will help support us in the Q and A. Uh, I'll go ahead and introduce my panelists today. We have Doug and Chris from Keystone. Uh, go ahead and take yourselves off mute guys and, and uh, just give a little wave, say hello. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are. <laughs> We're dialing in from around the world. So I think Doug, you're in New Hampshire, is that right? That is correct. Okay, great. And we have Chris from Keystone. Say hi, Chris. Hi, good morning to everybody. Or good afternoon, actually. <laughs> And uh, we are in uh, we're in Toronto with uh, with Chris. That's where I'm located as well. Actually, I'm in Kokomo. Yes, that Kokomo from the uh, famous Beach Boys song. No, I wish. I'm in downtown Toronto as well. All right, with Rapid Shape, we have Karsten, Ava, and Robin, uh, and they're reporting live from Germany. So say hello, Karsten and Ava. Hello. Good morning. On. Good afternoon and good evening. Great. Um, if you guys can turn up your mic a little bit or speak a little louder, that would be great. Um, and then we've got Robin as well. And Robin uh, will help on uh, the technical and nesting part of this presentation. Say hi, Robin. Hello, guys. I'm Robin. And I'm uh, one level upstairs from the other guys. Same location. So it's evening in Germany. Ah, <laughs> that's right. Okay. So uh, listen, I know it's the busiest time of year in dental. Uh, so we very much appreciate you taking the time today to improve your understanding of the digital workflow. Um, this is the world that we live in now, so it's very important. Um, we hope today you can learn about the options that exist to take your business to the next level. So after this introduction, uh, we will speak for about 20 minutes uh, about resins and then production for another 20 minutes and then 10 minutes at the end for questions and answers. So 3D printed resins are specifically formulated for the dental, uh, dental industry today, and they basically cover all available applications. But what is a resin and how does it become a dental model? Well, the strategy in general behind 3D photopolymerization, also known as photo curing or photo cross-linking, is based on using monomers and oligomers in a liquid state that can then be cured or photopolymerized upon exposure to a light source of a specific wavelength to form thermosets. A photo initiator or photo initiator system with relatively high absorption coefficients, of course, is required to convert photolytic energy into the reactive species, either radical or cationic, uh, um, <laughs> either radical or cationic, which can drive the chain growth. Uh, this is all extremely, uh, you know, complicated and in depth uh, in in theory, but in practice, thankfully, we were able, uh, we have been able to partner with manufacturers from around the world that can bring you this seemingly compl complicated technology in an easy to understand format that plays well with others. Um, the resins you'll be seeing today are open format, so they're designed to work with a variety of 3D printers on the marketplace, and uh, with Rapid Shape as well, their printers are also open, so you are free to use whichever uh, resins you so choose. So with that, let's get started on the resin portion of today's presentation. I'm going to hand it over to Doug with Keystone and he will take you through it. Take it away, Doug. All right, it says host disabled participants screen sharing. Oh, I guess it defaulted back. All right, try that again. Okay, can everybody see my screen? We can. I just put it in presenter mode. All right, can you see my first slide? We can. It's not unfortunately going into PowerPoint. Just... All right, is it just showing my opening slide? Yeah, if you could put it in full screen, that would probably be better. But yes, it is on your first slide. I thought it wasn't. Sometimes F5 will take care of that for you. Unfortunately, it's not working. Uh, if you resume slideshow, perhaps.
Yeah. Well, just minimize the screen. I think the slideshow show is in the background already. Is that better? And then make the presenter mode off and then it should be in full screen again. Is that in full screen now? Not yet. How are we doing now? I apologize for the delay. Was that in full screen mode now? There we go. Wonderful. Great. Yes. A little bit of delay in the technology. All right. Just um, I'm going to go through a little bit about who I am and then who Keystone is, and then we'll get into the to the resin materials. So I've been involved in uh, dentistry now for more than 20 years, and uh, most of that time was primarily spent in the digital or CAD CAM world. So I started way back when in the late 1990s uh, with Procera and doing um, custom abutments and copings and as well as some surgical guide stuff with different design softwares. And I've worked with pretty much all the design softwares that are out there now. Uh, also, I've done a lot of work with interoral scanning uh, since its inception, uh, as well as milling uh, of copings and, and custom abutments and so on and so forth. And then about 10 years ago, I got involved in 3D printing um, in the, both in development of different products as well as um, selling and marketing the products. And then in the last uh, couple of years, I've been involved in the material end of the, of the business, which has actually given me a great opportunity to experience a number of different 3D printers, uh, as well as obviously the growing market for resins. So if you look at Keystone as a company, um, many people don't realize that we actually are a global company with offices throughout the world. We actually have over 4,000 SKUs in our, in our catalog. Uh, and many of you probably already use or buy some of our products. Uh, we have our main facility in PA in New Jersey. Um, we have uh, materials in stock um, pretty much around the world right now and have a new partnership with Henkel, which allows us a great uh, global distribution. Um, and then we have service and fulfillment in both the US and the EU in different time zones. Um, I'm just gonna go briefly through some of the, you know, who are the players as far as the uh, resin materials are concerned. Um, if you look at the overall market, 90% of the, the uh, materials that are sold, uh, at least here domestically, are sold by the um, printer manufacturers, okay? Then actually Keystone is the second largest material supplier um, globally, actually, um, and we have 13% of the market. One a quick fact about that, 90% of those um, resins being sold by the printer manufacturers, actually they're buying our materials to be used in their printers, so many of them uh, that part of that 90% number is ours. And then you can see some of the other uh, Dreve, Detax, uh, Pro 3 Cure, and then Chira are all other uh, material providers. Uh, one thing that makes Keystone unique, I think, is that we really do um, strive to, to have our 3D printer partners use as many of our materials as possible. So like Rapid Shape, um, they're a great partner of ours and uh, they use just about every material that we provide and as an open system. That really is what you should be looking for in a 3D printer. As far as who's buying these printers now, you can see 56% uh, of the dental laboratories with 3D printers have more than one now. Um, there was a time um, in, you know, in just my life cycle that I never thought a laboratory would have more than one printer, but now you're seeing two, three, and even four printers. Um, as, as the flexibility of these printers and their capabilities change and grow, um, laboratories are finding more and more uses for them. So you can see here that the lar larger laboratories are actually uh, have 3.8 um, printers. And then if you look at the medium and small laboratories, they have more than one on average. So you're seeing a growth in this market that's significant and there's really not uh, much to expect, but further growth. Um, if you look at the um, overall production in a dental laboratory, 86% of the laboratories out there see the growth in the utilization of a 3D printer growing uh, in their laboratories. Um, just 3% think it will decrease and then 11% have no change. So you can anticipate in the months and years going forward that the utilization of 3D printers is gonna grow significantly in your, in your businesses. One of the key uh, factors in this whole thing is the is the validation and the partnerships that the 3D printing companies have with material companies like Keystone. And I think it's one thing when we talk about validations, it's a very important factor in this. And we work very closely with Rapid Shape uh, to make sure that all of our model, all of our printing materials are validated and set up properly on their machine to make best use of this. So. I would um, put us up against any other material company out there in, in how thorough we are. We spend a lot of time and effort on this uh, in going out and making sure that um, our materials are being utilized properly. So 
part of the validation process is FDA regulations as well. So there's really three um, parts to that. There's the material itself, which we validate and we have ISO certifications and all the different uh, needed uh, qualifications in order to get FDA approvals. But we also talk about those materials being printed on a specific printer. So you can see a number of our different printer partners, not all of them use all of our materials. And then the last part of it is the post curing. So one of the great things that we've offered here at uh, Keystone is, is the availability to go on our website. And I'm gonna try this, um, let me see what happens. If you do go onto our website, let me know if it pops up. Um, you can actually go in here and you can actually see exactly what resins are provided. Um, can everybody see that? Yes, we can. Okay, so you can see the different materials that are that are qualified on our on ours, and also if you click onto the actual material, you can go down and see the different parameters of the light force and whatnot used on this uh, when you're when you are um, going to use a different material. So, in addition to that, the other key component on this, as I mentioned earlier, was the. Um, was the post curing units in the same we have the same website for the post curing units too and post curing is very very important on this um you know in the in the early stages of 3d printing a lot of people would use their own self-made uh curing boxes that's i certainly discourage you um, in doing that in in buying the right uh post curing unit for the material and or the printer so um, we also provide validation of all this as well so Rapid Shape has their own post curing units. I highly recommend that you would get one of those along with the printer. Um, in that way, you ensure uh, proper curing of the material or pro proper post processing of the material once it is printed. And then you can go on to this on our website again and, and just scroll down to where uh, Rapid Shape's post curing unit is, and it'll actually give you all the settings for that. So it's extremely important that you follow the protocol, whether it be the printing of the material as well as the post curing of the material. So Keystone has a number of different uh, materials. Um, really our flagship material where I'm gonna spend most of our time today is on the, on the soft splint. If you haven't used soft splint uh, to date, it's probably one of the fastest growing uh, used uh, materials in the market right now. It is unique um, for night guards as it is a, a softer material. Um, it's not like the, the traditional hard splint material. Um, if we look at the fabrication and, and how and where we've come from, the typical um, handcrafted cured acrylic. Um, this was a very time-consuming process, um, and it, um, you know, I would say, was used less because of that, or it was prescribed less because of that. Um, and it, quite frankly, the patients that have them, and me included, um, found them very uncomfortable and didn't wear them uh, as much as we should have. Um, then we came into the thermal thermal forming age, um, and you know, it's a very good process. It's been used. It is a little bit more manually, um, requires a little more manual uh, building or uh, transformation in, in using this product. And then we moved into the digital revolution where we started milling these splints. And, and part of the problem with this one is you just didn't get a lot of splints out of a puck. Um, so it was a little more costly. And now finally we've moved into the printing um, age. I, I think if you look at the what's being printed um, primarily right now or what's being printed the most is obviously dental models which i think is around 85 or 86 percent of what's printed and second and in, in growing fast is the night guard business this is a very strong uh, product um, to be able to be printed and the profitability is very strong both for the dental laboratory and also for the doctors who are prescribing them so one of the things that when we develop this um, splint material is we wanted to make it unique. We didn't want it to be like any other materials that, that were out there. And one of the early concerns was if we're going to make a soft splint material, how is it going to hold up um, as far as abrasion is concerned? So we did a, uh, or this was an independent study that was done on our, on our material. And basically what we did is we put it into a cycle testing. And uh, typically with a material like a hard splint, for instance, and you'll see some of the other materials that are in here, um, these went, would go through a 200,000 life cycle test. Uh, which would just basically show the abrasion uh, and the wear on the actual uh, medical device that were that was created. So you can see here, we actually doubled that and went to 400,000 cycles. And you'll notice that we actually performed better uh, at 400,000 uh, 400, cycles than some of our competitors as a hard material um, did at 200,000 cycles. So you can rest easy that this product is going to wear very well. Uh, it's going to be very durable for the um, for the end user or the patient. 
as far as the maintenance and cleaning of this material, uh, it cleans like any other night guard or splint, um, just soap and water. Um, you don't, or any type of commercial products that like an effort, effort in. Um, it's re recommended uh, be removed when eating or drinking. That seems to be common sense. Um, not wearing this while drinking highly pigmented uh, beverages like wine or coffee um, can be uh, used with a steam cleaner. And you really want to avoid soaking this in hot water for long periods of time. Some people will take them out in the morning and put them in warm water just to clean them. But you know, for short periods of time, it's fine. But for long periods, we don't recommend it. So what really makes this unique and, and why this product has grown so rapidly? Um, it, it combines the strength needed to protect the teeth, but also the flexibility for better patient comfort. I, I, I'm, I'm a, um, an example of this. Again, I had the hard splint uh, for many years and I've moved over to this product and I do wear it longer, um, especially, you know, in fact, through the night. Many times with my other one, if I wake up in the middle of the night, I would actually kick it out of my mouth or take it out of my mouth. Um, this one here, I hardly notice that I'm wearing it. So it's, it's much more comfortable. It's not brittle, it won't um, break, okay? You can actually flex it with your fingers or in your mouth and bite down on it and you can drop it on the floor. It's not going to break. Obviously, I mentioned the abrasion rate that's on this and how it was uh, measured and we've performed very, very well there. It's, it's easily polished, um, cleans easily. It has the, the material itself, uh, the soft sweat material has a three year shelf life. Um, it has long term color stability, so you're not going to see this product change or discolor over time. Um, formula is cure without oxygen uh, innovation layer. So it doesn't require nitrogen free processing. Um, Biocompatibility resins fully tested and compliant with international standards. So it's FDA approved, it's Health Canada approved. It has CE marks as well. So this is, uh, again, it's been a, a terrific uh, material for us. Uh, we, we delivered it, it's about a year or 13 months old now. It's done, done very, very well. Uh, as far as the profitability for our laboratories in this, um, we've seen a significant growth uh, actually during the COVID uh, because there, there has been a um, increase in bruxism um, during the COVID um, period. So actually what we're seeing is more and more doctors prescribing this. So a typical, uh, this, these are in, in US dollars, so uh, please bear with that. But the, uh, a bottle of material runs for $425. And this just basically goes through uh, what your profitability or what kind of profitability you can expect on this material if you do bring it into your workflow. So a typical um, night guard is about eight grams. We do have a waste factor of about 12%. Usually the selling price, at least here in the US, is between $100 and $125. Uh, parts and labor on this material about 25 or 24.28. Um, cost of material is, is um, $3.86 for each part. Um, so you're looking at a profitability uh, based off of 10 splints per day for a year of roughly a quarter million dollars. And, and you know, some people are skeptical of that. I can tell you firsthand that um, this has become a major profit center for many of the laboratories out there using this. And it's very simple to use. So the value to the doctors, um, and this is gonna vary in different areas of the world, but it is very reimbursable. Uh, and if people do have health in, or uh, dental insurance um, and they prescribe this, so the doctors themselves, they may buy it for 125, but there is a lot of uh, reimbursement on this. So profitability is up for them. Patient acceptance, and I'm a good example of this. Um, you know, I started with the hard splint, moved to the soft splint, and I can tell you that I've moved a lot of other people over to it as well. So um, once people do get it, the doctors find that they're sending other patients to their offices to get it because it's much more comfortable. Patient compliance, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is very high simply because, um, you know, it is a soft material. You can bite on it and it doesn't feel like it's restricting your teeth. So it is very comfortable. Um, and it's also easy to design. So some of the doctors do have the design software and they send it out to the laboratory just to have it made or they use a third party design center. So um, some other things that are new in 2020, um, we have our surgical guide material. And again, all of this stuff is approved on the Rapid Shape printer. Um, this has been a very high performing uh, material um, and it continues to grow. The, the surgical guide market of itself is probably around 15% of the cases use a surgical guide now. And that's continuing to grow as the ease of manufacturing these surgical guides gets, um, you know, whether it's the design portion of it or the printing portion, it gets easier and easier. If you go back, 20 years ago with the Noble Guide System, this was a three or four week process to get the design done, get it sent in, get the things made and then put the sleeves on it. This has become a much, much easier process. We also offer key tray for custom trays. Um, and we also introduced a new indirect bonding tray for any of you who are doing orthodontic 
um, procedures in your laboratories. This is a very, very good product. It was introduced a couple of months ago. It has a um, great release agent to it, so you can put the brackets in it uh, and they pop off very easily um, without, you know, it, it improves the treatment time on this. So um, as you're, you can actually um, light cure right through this material. Um, so the bracket placement goes from about an hour and a half down to about a half an hour from our experience so far. So this has been a, a again, a trend in a, in a a differentiator in the ortho space and, I, and I, we're anticipating a lot more people doing indirect bonding trays as opposed to traditional bracket placement uh, in, in the coming months. We also offer a, a burnout material, a key cast. It's been around for actually quite some time now. Uh, it burns out very, very well. Um, so this is again all approved and, and validated on the, uh, the rapid shape machine. We have the key mask material, uh, which is a gingival or soft tissue material. Great if you're going to be doing um, any type of implant restorations. Um, this is a very easily printed material and inexpensive. Um, and then lastly, um, we're what's coming new, actually this month we're introducing it and we're working with uh, Rapid Shape right now. And we hopefully will um, be, uh, this will be available on the Rapid Shape uh, in, the, in a month or two as we move into the first quarter of next year, but it's the um, key model ultra material. This material is going to be extremely um, price competitive. It's probably going to be one, if not the cheapest um, MSRP on this material. Um, it is, it prints faster um, than traditional materials on virtually every printer we validated on. So we've done most of the legwork already with, with the rapid shape. And again, it's just a matter of getting it into their software and, and uploaded. So you will see a faster print with this material than the traditional uh, model materials. Um, it has a, you know, and I've done this for a long time. It has the best surface quality I've ever seen of a model. So you're going to see very smooth surface. A lot of times when you're printing model, I call it topography or little lines uh, in the in the actual printed object. Um, you will see a lot less of that on this, which makes it very very good for. Um, doing clear liners. If you're doing any clear liner manufacturing, uh, you're going to get a much clearer uh, finished product right off of the uh, model. And the other part of this too is the thermal forming release agent. Um, typically with uh, traditional model materials, when you went to take the clear liner off of the model, uh, it kind of got stuck on there. Um, this one has a built-in release agent that will provide easier um, user ability to, to taking that clear liner off of the model. So it's going to be available in the ivory and the light gray. Uh, and it works really well with the key mask material as well. So again, this, this will be in, most of the legwork has already been done with Rapid Shape and available on that machine, um, hopefully in the next month or two. And you're, you're gonna see a price on this that's gonna be sub 100 a kilo, depending on where you are uh, in, on the globe. Um, what else is coming um, in, you know, next year, we're gonna be introducing a new hard splint material. Um, there's still applications obviously for that. Um, we also are going to be um, introducing a denture based material along with the denture teeth um, and we will be introducing a temporary um, crown and, and bridge solution as well and that'll all hopefully come out in 2021. Um, and then lastly just a, a, a finishing kit um, that's just provided as a kit with all the tools that you would need to work with our different materials. So hopefully I haven't gone past my allotted time but um, that concludes my part of this. Um, I don't know if you want to ask questions now or should we wait till the end? Yeah, we'll, we'll wait till the end for that, Doug. We've got 10 minutes set aside after, okay. uh, after Rapid Shape is finished. But uh, thank you for that, Doug. That was um, a great overview of Keystone and its offerings. Um, if you want to go ahead and uh, stop sharing your screen, there we go. Um, we will now hand it over to Rapid Shape. Uh, before we do, I just, again, want to thank you for the overview. As you can see, Keystone covers a lot of applications already from splints, indirect bonding trays, surgical guides, soft tissue. Um, and then there's lots of exciting developments coming for 2021, uh, including dentures, which is a very hot uh, application as well. So uh, we feel here at Proto 3000, that Keystone is uh, one of the strongest partners uh, to have on board. Um, they ship out of the US, so that's great for anyone in North America. And um, the relationship has been uh, really great so far and continues to get better. So uh, thanks again, Doug. We really appreciate that. Okay, so now we're gonna hand it over to the production component of today's webinar. And that's where Karsten and Ava, and Robin, will take you through the nesting of the, the software um, and uh, actually show the printers themselves. But before we do that, Ava's got a short intro presentation that she's loading now. 
uh, to tell you a little bit more about Rapid Shake. Take it away, Eva. Thank you very much, Scott, and also thank you very much to Doug. Um, I would um, like to introduce, of course, also myself very briefly. So my name is Eva, and I am the key account manager of um, Brodo 3000 at Rapid Shape. And um, I prepared a little uh, company presentation. Um, I hope you can also see my screen. Uh, maybe you can um, say yes if you can see it. Yes? Okay, super. So um, first I would um, also like to um, introduce um, company Rapid Shape. In the meantime, of course, um, we are very famous also um, at Proto 3000 and also at Keystone. And um, we are a manufacturer of uh, professional 3D printing equipment and also the post-processing equipment. Um, as you um, of course already know, we are based in Germany. We are a German company in um, Southern Germany next to Stuttgart. And there we uh, produce and manufacture of our machines. Um, the company was founded in 2011 by um, our CEO, Andreas Schulteis. And in the meantime, uh, we have um, 130 employees. And as we are a very technical driven company, of course, also in the uh, 3D printing area, we invest 35% uh, in um, system development, so R&D and um, also in um, application and service. Um, the company, um, it came from a little background history in jewelry as um, the company, um, um, our um, partner company, our sister company, Schulteis, um, was founded in um, 1983 and um, there uh, we started in casting and heating machines in jewelry. And that is also where we come from because the company was founded in 2011 with the 3D printing equipment in the jewelry business. And in uh, 2012, one year later, we also um, um, founded the um, market in the hearing aid industry. And then we launched the hearing aid at 3D printing. And um, there we are, of course, very proud to say that we are the uh, market leader in hearing aid. And in 2015, with our first IDS, we launched the um, dental sector. And um, now we are, and um, this is our biggest uh, branch in our four branch and we uh, launched in the meantime. And um, then our last and a very um, interesting branch is industry. And this, uh, this uh, sector is um, quite young. It is um, one year now and one year ago, we launched the industry sector. And um, now we also have there a big cooperation together with the company Henkel. Um, we are worldwide at your side because we um, have um, we are an international company and um, of course what is very important um, to you we have a service hub in the USA in Andover so uh, we are very reachable in the USA in uh, in Canada, uh, Canada in the North American market and that is of course also um, very important for Proto 3000 and Keystone. And furthermore, we are also having a service hub in uh, Brazil and on the other side of the uh, world, also in Japan and in China. And of course, um, we are also here. We have a, a big service department and also um, Robin um, in our line, he is also supporting us in the uh, product uh, management and in our service department from Heimsheim, our headquarters in Germany. Um, here you can see a very quick overview about our 3D printing portfolio in the dental sector. And uh, beginning from the um, left hand side, um, we um, have the D10 plus. This um, system is especially for our chair side solutions. So this is uh, for the dentists and for clinics, um, a very easy and um, also very um, um, smart and clean solution for the dentist. Then we have um, the next step, um, the D20 plus cartridge and the D20 plus. 
this is already for um, medium-sized labs and also for um, starters um, labs who would uh, like to start with 3D print printing. Um, then the D30 Plus and the D42 and these systems they are um, for professional labs. This is also um, for a um, bigger volume and um, also with um, semi-automatization and um, with all of the um, um, systems is also compatible of course our post-processing equipment the IS wash and the IS cure. Um, on the right hand side you can see the big machines these are for industrial um, applications and um, there we are starting also with our D70 plus and then it is of course scalable for big volumes and um, with the D90 plus and um, our big workhouse for the ortho and the liner production, our D100 plus ortho. And um, all of the systems, they are all available at Proto 3000. And of course also, um, like Doug already mentioned, with the Keystone materials. And uh, now I would like to hand over to um, Robin and um, he will go a little bit more into detail in the um, slicing software NetFab and preparing the print shop. Yes. So, as Eva correctly mentioned, I started at RapidJB as a service engineer and now I was growing together with the company. And I'm product manager today at the company RapidShape. Um Yeah, Eva, if you just let me share my screen. <laughs> I will just kick you out. <laughs> so. Fine, it's working. I <laughs> Wonderful. So all of you should see NetFab now. NetFab is our slicing software. So with this software, we prepare all the jobs and send the finalized part or the finalized job directly to the printer. Um, as we got not much time, I'll go through this software real quick. Um, in this case, I'm using the total manual workflow, but of course there's a lot of possibilities to automize things in NetFab. Um, for the automated one, there's a special input file needed, but like I said, we will do now the manual one to see what possibilities we got and how to prepare a job. Um, on the right hand side, you can see our engine environment. So this is where you're gonna set up all the needed um, parts, all the needed um, settings for your printed piece. So we start with a workflow. You can select between different workflows. They're also going to be added more in the future, of course. For now, I'm going to stick with a manual workflow because we got most of the buttons available at the bottom. Um, as a next step, you then have to select your printer. So in this case, I will use our ASM 2.0 machine, so a machine which is cutting off the job automatically. You will see it later when Carsten is um, showing his video. And um, you can select between two different platforms. Search a guide is a special platform for search a guides. We will use the standard one as we are printing our splint. And as a last step, you're going to select the material you want to print with. Of course, there's all these key model or key splint materials available. If you want to add more, you can do it via this little gear over here. And the add, you can see there's a lot of materials available already, all validated and so on. So that's what also Keystone and RapidShape were doing like um, Doug was mentioning, a validation so that everything is, for, is fine with the part and the, value, um, and the size and the biocompatibility is as good as possible. So for now, we'll just select the Keysplint soft material. And in order to load the file, you can either drag and drop it, like I'm going to do it now from the other screen, or you can just load it with the load parts button. This will just open the window to select where the file is. So if we just have a look at our uh, splint, we can see it's flat based. I hope my laptop is doing its work. Yes, wonderful. So it's flat. And we just follow now the recommendation of Keystone and we have to print it in 20 degrees angle. So I just set it up real quick. I want to have it as a 20 degree angle and that's fine. You can see there's a range all parts button. This one is what we don't need for now because we just print one part. If you got multiple parts, this will automatically arrange all of them. If we're gonna have a look from the top, you also see what the align all parts button is doing. This one is just then telling you where to place all the parts. For example, I will now just say, I want to have it centered and that's fine. Okay, then next step, hollow parts. We don't need to hollow it. So, but like I said, in the manual mode, you got all of the buttons available in here. 
But what we want to do is to add a support. Um, as lots of you maybe already know, adding supports manually is kind of an embarrassing job. What we already have got is an integrate support script, for example, also for the soft splint. In this case, the key splint soft material was um, exactly where this one is validated for. So I can just say I want to add supports and I use a script so I don't have to think about where to place them. And I'm also going to lift my parts before the supporting so I can easily remove it from the platform. So now NetFab is doing its job. Um, I think this is going to take on my laptop around about one minute and then everything is done already. In the meantime, I can, you can see on the right hand side the status of the one of the single buttons. So you can see we did align all the parts. So there's a check mark. So you know exactly what you already have done. We didn't hold the parts, so no check mark, but we're now waiting for the supports. You can see this little um, clock so that we know NetFab is still calculating something. Of course, there's going to be, as well as the workflows, like I said, more and more support scripts coming. So this is all about the indications um, which you which you need supports already or the indications to prioritize. But let's see what's going to be next. We already got, I think it was around about seven scripts already available. You still can do all of the supports uh, manually if you want to. It's also possible in NetFab, but as I said, a little bit time consuming. And if you're not um, if you're not uh, doing it. On a regular daily basis, you might do some mistakes and therefore the part won't be printed fine. So let's see when my part is supported properly. Like I said, I'm on my notebook, unfortunately, but this should also handle it really good. Um, you can see there's also a remove, su remove supports button as the next one in case you um, selected the wrong script, for example. Um, while it's still calculating, the next button would be a base plate. This is also what we're going to execute because we want to have a base plate underneath the part for an easy removal. For example, if you remove it manually, um, this base plate is also making it um, sure or make it easier to not break any supports and then their residues on the platform. Okay, seems like my laptop doesn't want to work anymore. I'm sorry, but that's live. <laughs> that's what's going to happen if you do it live. No problem. Then, then explain us the, <laughs> the next steps theoretically. Ah, so I thought my laptop should be faster, but that's fine. Now we're there. So you can see the supports are created now automatically. Like I said, I was trying this before this webinar without all these um, connected devices and it was doing it in under one minute. And that's a laptop which is not designed for the CAM software. So this is usually really quick. Um, the base plate, like I said, we want to create it, but we don't want to waste material. That's why you can select also in here just to create a base plate for the shadow of the parts. So the shadow of the parts is if I look from the top, on to the platform, exactly what I see is my part and the shadow underneath it will be my grid. Let's create a grid. You can see now it's um, calculating on the left hand side. And once this is done, you will see the grid underneath the supports. This is also connecting the supports, by the way, which is making things more stable. You can then do the post processing with the supports and the plate on the bottom. Uh, that's no issue. You can also remove it before if you want to. So this is now the grid you can see. And if you look from the top, you won't see anything as the grid is directly just the shadow in order to save material. Okay, last step would then be to create the job. So I've done all of these. You can see what um, actions I already called. Now I would just create the build. This one is just now calculating um, all the information which I entered on top. So for which machine, because each machine has a different, um, for example, scaling value and for which material, because each material has to be um, sliced differently. And also the parameters for each material are differently and they are just now submitted into one file, which is then forwarded to the printer or saved on a USB stick and then forwarded to the printer with a stick. That's um, all possible. And then Carsten, for example, in this case can start the print shop directly on his printer with all this information. 
interesting part about this is the printer knows exactly what material is in there and what materials in the reservoir. So, but I think Carsten is now the one to explain you more about the printer. You can now see as a final um, job overview here, the slides, you can check all the slices if there's something weird or if the supports are generated at the right spot. You can see now on here, I can make it a little bit bigger for you. This is always the important part. If the lowest part of the part, uh, if the lowest position of the part is supported properly, this is where you're going to have a look at, and you can see the lowest part is directly built built onto the tip of the supports, so everything is fine. I can now send it to the printer directly. This is not going to work in this webinar as I'm sitting in a as I'm in a different network than the printer, and I can also save it as a file, for example, on my desktop or on a USB stick, which I can directly can connect afterwards with the machine. Okay, so that's all about NetFab for now. Carsten, do you want to take over? Of course, I, I will. Hi together. Um, my name is Carsten. I'm in the role of Sales Director of RapidShape, and I'm the chosen one to, pre to present to you um, how the printer is working. You say, hey, this is kidding. The Sales Director is uh, showing how the printer is using, uh, is be used. Let's see. So we have the situation that um, Robin prepared all the print job and Robin um, pressed on the button and sent it down wireless LAN based or a wired LAN based. And we do have here in our printer the button select job. We can select the perfect job that is shooting down via Wi-Fi or via LAN and start the printer. Done. This is anything I need to do here with the printer and now the print job will run. You have seen there is no dedicated situation. You, you need to, to play around with settings. You need to play around with material settings. This is the reason why Keystone, RapidShape, all together, we um, validated the material setups, the material data, and you can use this out of the library. So the perfect thing now, normally we would need some minutes, depends on the height of the product, if it's 20 minutes or if 50 minutes or 70 minutes. In this case, we have prepared the final print job. And the perfect thing with a D30 printer that we do have currently here is the print job will not only automatically print it, the print job will also automatically separate it. So we do have here in a cutting knife. And after the print job is done, the cutting knife runs through beginning in the front of the machine, running into the end of the machine and will cut down the printed, the printed product into this basket and will, without any idle time, start the next print job. So, like I said, the print job is, is done. I can remove this basket and ta-ta, we do have a, bite split, uh, a splint here. And this is the splint that Robin prepared beforehand in the NetFab. This splint now is printed, but not post-cured. But this is not a big problem because we do have the rapid shape um, and wash and clean uh, wash and cure machine here available. We have the rapid shape washing machine. It's quite easy. Open the machine, place the printed product in, close the machine, press on the button jobs. And due to the fact that we do have sent out the, the print shop from the printer directly into the cleaning machine, he knows or the, the, it knows what product is in, what material is in, and by pressing the start button, we will have the perfect set of material, the perfect set of data, and it will be cleaned in five to eight minutes. These are two cleaning cycles. After the cleaning cycle is done, just remove it and place it in the light curing machine, place it in. Same thing what I did, what I said before, we do have in this machine also the perfect set of parameter available because of its sent through, only press the start button and after additional five to 10 minutes, we do have the finally cured product on hand and it's sendable to the customer. It's also um, after a, 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 final, uh, a final process available for the patient. So this is what we would like to present to you today very briefly, how easy it is in having a combined material machine ecosystem with validated set of parameters, with easy to use for clinics, for laboratories, for small users and for 
for hard users, all those are available within Keystone and RapidChain environment. Thank you from my side. I'd like to hand back to Scott and I'm pretty sure we will have some time for a Q&A session. Yeah, that's great, Karsten. Thanks so much. It's nice to actually see the machine uh, next to a person just to give some perspective on the size of the machine. Um, so as you can see, tabletop size, uh, the complete system, including the cure station and the wash station, beautiful design. I think the, uh, the design goes really well together and uh, they've got a great product and you know it's been very popular so far we get a lot of requests we have uh, lots of units working in the field as well uh, so this is not theoretical uh, this is happening today uh, it's proven the workflows are proven and once you get your settings and parameters um, set in your software and you get the hang of that process the beautiful thing about digital is that it's consistent so time and time again uh, you'll, you'll learn how to set your parameters and get consistent results, consistent accuracy. All right, so uh, now we will turn it over to a Q&A session. Uh, it's actually perfectly 10 minutes until one. We're gonna try to wrap it up on time, but we do wanna address all your questions as well. So to all the attendees on the call, if you go to the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A icon. Just click that icon, enter your question in there, and uh, myself or one of the panelists will be happy to answer that. Um, all right, so let's start looking here. We had a question about the, uh, the about monomers in the material. So this is a keystone question. Um, is this material monomer free? And I believe that question was uh, in relation to the key splint soft material. But um, Doug or Chris, did, did you want to talk a little bit about mon monomers and, and how that relates maybe more in general also? You can sort of take that as a topic. It, it does have a monomer in it. Uh, I mean, it's you know, been proven that it's very rare that it's, it causes any type of allergic reaction to that. So, um, you know, we've probably put thousands of these in um, throughout the world and we've, I, to my knowledge, I have had no adverse effects from that, so. Great, uh, can you guys turn on your video for the Q&A, please? There we go. Um, also, if, if you go on to uh, our website and just ask for the IFU um, um, and the indications for use, all of the monomers that are in there are, are uh, outlined in that IFU. Wonderful. Um, I don't know if Chris, if you had anything to add to that. Um, no, Doug, so the, it's very low levels of monomer. Uh, and again, we have zero cases but we have to announce that there is some monomer in there just in case someone is severely, severely allergic. Um, but it's such low levels that um, we've never had a case. Great. Okay, um, another uh, Keystone question. Um, you guys were talking about introducing the new denture materials in 2021. We're very excited about that. Uh, the question was, is this a try-in or what? Please clarify. So it, it, it's going to be a temporary material to start with. Um, you know, our expectation long term is to offer um, a whole variety of shades of this material. So, um, but you know, our first introduction will be a temporary material. Um, you know, good for 30 days or 60 days, whatever the indication ends up being. So, you know, ideally we'd like to go with something that, like, along the lines of a Vita shade guide and offering, you know, different shades of different teeth. So um, that that is something that we continually work towards. Uh, the denture material itself, um, I know it's kind of the, it's a highlight and a very, a very high interest right now as far as the denture material is concerned. We don't want to come out with just another denture material. There's you know, obviously a number of denture materials that are out there. We've, we have some right now. We just don't think it's a game changer at this point. So we are trying to come up with something that's going to be unique, kind of like our soft spot material, um, you know, and, and introduce it to, to the market at the right time. So. Um, we, we want to make it, you know, set a new industry standard when it comes to that material and also with the teeth as well. So aesthetics have become very, very relevant with a printed uh, denture or teeth. And um, that's why we're, we're really working hard to make this one a little different than some of the other ones that are available. Okay, that makes sense. Um, a bit of a follow up question to that while we're talking about the denture base and teeth material. Um, those materials and uh, the hard split material. What is the Health Canada and FDA approval timeline for these new materials? 
I'm not sure. Most of the stuff comes out simultaneously with FDA clearance. But once we get all that stuff, um, we work closely with our regulatory department and, and Health Canada to get these things through at the same time. So um, there shouldn't be, you know, maybe a week or two lag, but usually we have all that taken care of before we bring it to the market. Okay, wonderful. All right, I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions in the Q&A um, panel. So uh, those of you on the call as an attendee, if, if you do have any questions, now's your chance. Now's your chance to ask questions and get those questions answered. Um, and if things come up later, I mean, you know how to contact me. I can always reach out to my manufacturing partners directly for information. Uh, we're all very well connected. So um, unless there are any other questions at this time, uh, I, we can either wrap I up can or just add, add, add a comment. If I could just add a comment, is not so much a question, but one of the things that um, that Keystone really takes pride in is the validation process, um, and, and this goes for all of our materials. Again, I mentioned it in the presentation that we, I stack us up against anybody in the industry when it comes to validations, and we've worked very, very closely with Rapid Shape throughout this process as they're introducing new products, and they're very much a valued partner of ours. Um, and I, I think the way that that product was just described. You know in the printing from the design through the printing and the post-processing um, they've done their homework and done an, an extremely good job and their value proposition on this product is really second to none in any of the 3d printing that we've experienced in, in the dental industry there's all different types of printers that are out there right now but the, the real value comes when you have it from a to z and they've put together a package i think in, as well as working with our material that um, is extremely competitive in the, in the market right now as far as the quality of the prints and the, and the products that they're producing. I, I can give this absolutely back. It's, 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 it's a pleasure to, to, to collaborate because of also the, the extreme close uh, collaboration in between our R&D teams, really the, the chemical R&D team on, on your side and then the, 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 the validation R&D team on our side. It's a day-to-day, -day, often hour-by-hour -hour discussion and exchange and this is the result now we can present to you in the uh, in the call today that's great um i know uh we weren't supposed to talk about this too much because there's still some things being worked out but we did have a question about the official release date for the new keystone ultra model material um, and i know there's also some validation that has to still be completed with rapid shape i think the timeline very generally is january 2021 are we are we safe as an estimate january february or again i think that most of the uh, hard lifting has been taken care of it's just a matter of some um, you know t's and i's that have to be completed to get the stuff out um, and i would hope that it would be available early first quarter of next year um, again i don't think there's any issue with the, the capability of printing it at this point i mean we've actually run into a hiccup with manufacturing actually the demand on this product has been overwhelming um, you know we've already taken orders for this pre-orders of over 2,000 kilos of it so um, it's you know it, it there's really nothing standing in the way other than a couple of small details that need to be taken care of which hopefully will be done in the next you know three to four weeks six weeks maybe tops right from rapid shape we have received uh, the development materials so our development processes are close to final or are final and with our q1 release of our engine this material will be available in all rapid shape printers as validated workflow okay great and you know let's not forget that keystone already has fantastic materials available today model material keystone soft we've we've talked about these um uh, I've got Mike Wang on the call from Proto 3000. Mike, I'm going to put you on the spot for a moment, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Mike joined our team uh, fairly recently, and we're very excited to have him on board. Uh, he's had some experience printing at our facility with the Rapid Shape printer and the Keystone materials. Uh, did you did you want to comment a little bit on on your experience, Mike, so far? Yeah. Um, prior to using this, uh, I had a little bit of experience with the, you know some of the other printers, and I I absolutely love the. Um, the, the workflow with the rapid shape. Um, I've been in constant communication with their uh, service team via email. They're very helpful, very communicative. Um, Keystone is fantastic resident so far. Um, we've had virtually no issues and I'm, I'm brand new to using it. So very encouraged by the material and the, the printer. Yeah, and you know, we've had we've had that similar type of feedback from uh, the customers that, that were early adopters of this. They 
really commented that things were well thought out and of course no technology is perfect and you always need to be prepared to potentially have a problem but the good news is when you partner with a competent integrator like proto 3000 who has well-trained staff uh, to help you those problems they're they're very easy to overcome and move past and, and learn from so that in the future you're able to troubleshoot yourself in the lab and be able to depend on the, the technology which is the goal at the end of the day um, so thanks for that mike appreciate it i don't see any other questions oh uh are the rapid shape printers designed and built in germany Yes, they are. Um, Rapid Shape does have the R&D center here in, in, in Heimsheim, Germany. So our um, um, R&D team lab-wise and also mechanical, electrical um, engineering is located here. The, the core of our service team is located here. And we do have in southern Germany the, the big production hub. Yes. So long answer, keep it short. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's great. I mean, because in the dental industry, we're, we're used to high levels of quality coming from German companies and manufacturers. So um, I know myself personally, when I first discovered the Rapid Shape products, there was that extra bit of confidence understanding, okay, it's a German company designed and engineered in Germany, high levels of quality, attention to detail and so forth. Uh, Keystone as well, you know, being, a, um, you know, obviously there's locations around the world, as Doug pointed out in his initial slide. Um, but because there's a U.S. presence in the same time zone uh, and the warehouse is in the U.S., we're able to get materials quickly to our customers, answer questions quickly, etc. So there's a lot of great synergies happening right now between Rapid Shape, Keystone and Proto 3000. And our intention is to uh, amplify that into 2021. Um, so I don't see any further questions. I think with that, it's one o'clock now. We could probably wrap it up and stay on time. Uh, again, thanks everybody that took the time to join today's call. I really hope it was a good use of your time. I know how busy everybody is. Um, and if you do have further follow-up questions, uh, I can be reached scott at proto3000.com. Um, you'll all get a follow-up email. We, we try to make it very easy to connect with us. Please ask, learn, develop your understanding. Uh, this is the way forward with the digital workflow today.